Greetings, I am the Spider Lord, and I am here to tell you the truth about spiders. This is Spider Lord TV. Okay, so welcome to Spider Lord TV. This is a uh, new YouTube channel that I'm launching, designed uh, to be an educational show about spiders, primarily uh, designed to teach one thing. Spiders are not dangerous. They're nothing to be feared. They're nothing to be hated. They get a bad deal. And throughout the course of this series, hopefully that will be something that becomes apparent and you will be educated, enlightened and reassured. Uh, along with this main show, Spider Lord TV, I will also be doing the Spider Lords A to Z. Um, as Spider Lord TV will primarily be focused upon British spiders. Um, two reasons. One, um, that's where I live, um, so it's where the majority of my knowledge lies. And two, it appears to be in the UK more than anything else where we just have this misconception that spiders are dangerous, something that um, can cause problems. And people just seem to have totally the wrong idea. It's very anti spider, very spider ignorant country if you will so i think that's where the most work can be done uh, however the spider lords a to z will allow me to feature things that will not be in the normal program as obviously there are thousands upon thousands of species of spiders that are uh, outside of the uk uh, certainly some of the more weird and, weird and wonderful species and um, i want to be able to feature those uh, for themselves and um, the last show that I've got planned would be uh, Tea Time with the Spider Lord and this will be devoted to tarantulas as once again I don't think there's any real educational shows for tarantulas and I would like to see this aspect you know sort of uh, explored so that the myths and misconceptions regarding tarantulas are also dispelled uh, but this is Spider Lord TV and uh, for today, the inaugural episode, we are going to talk about Steatoda nobilis. Steatoda nobilis is the noble false widow spider that the press seem to feature quite a lot, um, using adjectives such as uh, aggressive, deadly, invasive, uh, or invading, rather, you know, as sensational scare tactics in order to get people to buy papers and click on their links. Um, whereas the actual truth behind Steatoda nobilis is vastly different. So there are a lot of misconceptions that people have around this spider and I'm looking to clear those up to present to you the real Steatoda. Nobilis. Um, so, Steatoda nobilis is um, an imported species. It's been here for around about 150 years. So, when papers say that it's invading, it's one of the slowest invasions in history. They came over in food imports from the Canary Islands in the 1870s, and um, they've been here ever since. Steadily expanding as they are a very successful spider, uh, as I will discuss in a moment, and generally just being a very successful species, um, which is no, you know, no crime in of itself. Uh, in those 150 years, nobody has ever died from a steatoda bite, uh, and the vast majority of the photographs and examples that you see of things like skin lesions and reported amputations and things like that have nothing to do with steatoda venom uh, at all. So uh, they are you know, a result of an infection, as again, I will detail shortly. Now, steatoda is actually um, one of, a, uh, sorry, steatoda nobilis is actually one of a number of steatoda um, species that we have in the UK. We also have steatoda grossa, uh, which is the cupboard spider, uh, steatoda bicomptata, which is the rabbit hutch spider, um, Steatoda uh, abmaculata, ab which is the white spotted um, false widow, I suppose. And um, then you also occasionally 
have uh, imported um, Stuto de Paiculana from mostly Spain, grapes and things, and also um, Stuto de Tranquilosa, um, which is a species which is much more common in America, but again, uh, lives over here, are isolated um, numbers. Again, most likely uh, from an import, but they've not established themselves anywhere near the um, stage that um, Nobilis has. So one of the reasons that Stuto Nobilis has been so successful is uh, due to the way that it, it has so many um, egg sacs. It, it, it breeds very prolifically. It's got like a, if you look here, you've got um, multiple egg sacs uh, laying by one individual. You see those there. You've actually got the baby spiders here as well, actually. Uh, spiderlings that have hatched. So they're not one of those species that's um, happy to lay just one egg sac. Um, they have a lot of offspring. Um, I mean, the, the spider that laid these is actually a, that's a fourth egg sac now, and she'll keep going. So they, they breed a lot. Um, they are also uh, very good predators and opportunistically cannibalistic of other species of spider. So they tend to have an impact on other spider populations, taking over in places where they're prevalent. So uh, down south, they are um, in abundance. Um, I did a, a quick unofficial survey of a hospital in Essex and estimated that on the surface of that hospital, around about 10,000 steatodinobilis individuals. And yet that hospital, you know, no mass reports of bites or amputations or skin lesions or any necrotic admissions. Um, so, by and large, they prefer to be left alone. They're very shy creatures. Um, and where the papers are reporting that they readily bite, this is just not true. Um, they are actually much more likely to run and hide than they are to bite. Uh, another defence mechanism they've got is to play dead. They'll just curl, you know, pull their legs up like that and they'll just play dead. Um, hoping that whatever is bothering them will leave them alone. If that doesn't work, then they'll just run away some more. Uh, in fact, to get something like that to bite you, you really do have to trap it, um, like in clothing or maybe rolling over onto it. And then when the spider has no other option, then and only then it will bite. Um, and this is because venom is very precious to a spider. Venom is used for one purpose only, and that is to incapacitate its prey so that it can eat it at its leisure. Spiders um, do not have jaws um, as, as in you and I know them they don't have mouths that can chew uh, and eat food instead what they do is they inject venom through their fangs which are housed in the um, shilikere and they inject a uh, powerful neurotoxin uh, into their prey that immobilizes them and then what the spider does is it, it injects an enzyme which breaks down the body of the prey and it slurps it up kind of like a, like a milkshake um, for its mouth parts. It has no ability to chew, um, to soften food. So it has a liquid, um, liquid diet. Um, it doesn't eat flesh at all. And that, that's, how, that's how they eat. And anything that falls into a steatoder's web, uh, steatoder web is game. Be it another spider, wasp, crane fly, other fly, any kind of pest, ladybird, beetle. They spin a very, uh, as you can see here, again, a very uh, a very messy web. They're not an orb web species. So they spin a cobweb with lots and lots and lots of sticky strands so that anything that falls in gets stuck fast. And then the spider will just come out and grab it, um, just in case the prey is able to escape. And um, it will grab it and uh, immobilise it uh, with its venom. And then it will use that to uh, subdue the prey. Uh, because they don't really wrap their prey up like um, like an old web species. So their venom is used for that purpose only. There's no point in using it on uh, things that they can't eat. Uh, so they're very, very reluctant to bite and inject venom unless they absolutely have to as a last resort. Now, um, these bites that we are seeing, or these wounds that we are seeing, and it's worth um, remembering that there are many, many, many more things that can bite um, uh, a human and inflict a, a bite. 
um, than spiders. In fact, there's probably about, about, I would say, 20 species of spiders out of the 650 or so we've got in the UK that can, um, that can you know, successfully bite a human. Um, whereas the list of you know, flies, midges and mosquitoes, uh, not to mention other crawling insects that can, that can inflict a bite, is uh, huge in comparison. So if you don't see a spider actually biting you, you won't know what the bite is. Nobody can tell from a bite what exactly ha has inflicted it. Um, so these, these cases where you see um, lesions and, and things like that could be any number of things. Now, I have actually been bitten by a stetodinobilis. I made the spider bite me to document the effects. Uh, and I did this just to you know, see what the effects were, see what the symptoms were. And um, <coughs> I, it was quite hard to get the spider to bite me. I had to push the spider down onto my flesh to get it to bite me on my, um, on my left forearm. Uh, and the symptoms were as follows. So there's a little bit of pain, not a lot. Uh, certainly no worse than a bee sting. Um, there was a little bit of swelling, uh, minor swelling in the area. And uh, there was a lot of itching or puritus. Uh, and this is what I think causes the main problem, um, is that people scratch the bite because it is very itchy, uh, almost like a gnat bite. And uh, this, this basically um, opens up the, the skin to infection because you're, you're breaking you know, the skin, you're, you're scratching and making an open wound. And this allows um, infections such as cellulitis or any other number of um, skin or you know, staph, staph infections to take root. And then these can cause uh, big problems, uh, lesions and pus and uh, open wounds that will um, need a treatment and will look very closely uh, like these reported steatoda bites. But um, the actual symptoms of a steatoda bite are not necrotic in nature. In fact, one of the over uh, other symptoms that I would have um, sort of reported on, on myself was actually a, a strange clamminess lasted for about 48 hours, which is the neurotoxins at work. And uh, yeah, the, the bite area was very clammy, very odd, very odd sensation, around about, yeah, about 48 hours. Um, so steatoda just, you know, they, they just don't have these necrotic properties to their venom. Um, a study has been done recently on their venom um, in Ireland um, by a laboratory. And uh, that study found that although the venom has uh, properties in common with Latrodectus, um, the true widow spider, which you, you would you know, expect because the, um, the, the steatoda is a cousin of Latrodectus, uh, a different genus within the same family, um, which is Thuridae, the comb-footed spiders. And um, you would expect it to have properties in, in common with that, um, with that cousin species. But the, um, the venom was not found to have any major necrotic properties at all. Neurotoxic, yes, that's how venoms work. Um, protein strands um, you know, interfere with the, uh, the, the, the nerve system. And uh, that's what causes the pain, the swelling, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but no major necrotic properties. Nothing that would cause the flesh to rot and slough off the body, showing these horrific wounds. Uh, only skin infections and, uh, you know... Um, staph infections will, will, will cause this uh, and this is what we're seeing in the majority of these cases um, in addition steatodinibilis is just not an aggressive species it does not bite for no reason it has no need to you know to bite um, other than when it absolutely has to it is not an aggressive species and that's not just my um, my opinion that is um, that is something that I know and uh, how do I know this? Well, I have been holding one for the entire time that I've been speaking to you in my fist. And she's not bitten me at all. In fact, she's, uh, she's absolutely fine, as you can see. And in fact, I can pick up again and put her back in my fist. Now, if I was to really, really squeeze, um, then I imagine, yeah, I mean, she would bite me and with good reason. Um, because I, I'm giving her no other choice. But uh, in this instance, um, once again, as I, I open my fist, you'll see, she's absolutely fine. And um, it's not like I didn't have my fist properly closed. I mean, you can see, you can see my nail marks right there. My fist was closed. They're just not aggressive. So what she's doing at the moment, is she's actually laying down a, a thread safety line, as you can see. This is the same thread that they use for their webs. It's quite sticky, 
Uh, and this instance is just designed to uh, help her in case she falls, um, as they are quite clumsy. You see that great big body, that great big abdomen. You see, there's the line working. She's working her way back up. And uh, yeah, I mean, she's got no interest in biting me. She has absolutely uh, no concept of what I am. Um, you know, I may as well just be uh, some kind of weird tree. A spider thinks very simply. Um, you know, will it eat me? It's, sorry, will it eat me or can I eat it? Uh, you know, predator and prey. Um, that, that, that's it, really. You know, they, they don't think about anything else. They just want to go around making lots of baby spiders. And she's, she's getting tangled up in her own web a little bit here. But uh, as you can see, I mean, I can poke her about a little bit and she just wants to run away. You know, she's not. You know, you know, what I would comfortably say is, is, you know, sort of bothering a spider. It's, that's not an aggressive, that's not an aggressive spider. I mean, just look at it. It's, it, it's just not aggressive. So, um, this is the real Steatogen nimbus, as you can see, perfectly benign um, species. She laid these uh, egg sacs here. You can see the skull marking on the, on her back, or what people say looks like a skull. It can look like a skull, but as you can see here, it's nearly entirely uh, missing, and um, you know, uh, there's, there's not a great deal there at all. Um, she's got this kind of remotely uh, sort of reddish legs here. The males have much more pronounced reddish legs, uh, and also a, a very, very dark, almost black uh, subthorax, which is the uh, the area here which contains the body, um, no, the thorax and the head. Uh, and then you've got the abdomen at the back here, obviously. Um, but as you can see, she's not... She's not overly bothered in the slightest. She's uh, quite calm, just wandering around, doing her spiderly things. So uh, the next time that somebody tells you that this species is aggressive and uh, dangerous, I would just ask you just to, um, you know, bear this video in mind. That's not an aggressive, dangerous spider. Um, it's still dead in the villas the Noble False Widow, uh, a name I don't particularly care for. I, I much prefer Noble Cobweb Spider. I think that works a little bit better. As you can see, she's kind of setting up a little web at the moment. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, overall, they're just, they're not dangerous. Let's just get that in our heads. At the end of the day, it's uh, just another spider. So yeah, if you like this, uh, please subscribe. There'll be lots more on the way soon. And um, Please share the video um, to your friends and um, let's get the message out there. Let's spread the message. There are no dangerous spiders. Um, there are just spiders. And if we respect um, and occasionally admire them, then um, that's all we need to do. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you next time. In the meantime, just uh, yeah. chill out. It's just a spider. <laughs>